What's up, everybody? It's John Barr coming to you on November 27th at about 10 p.m. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend and is ready for uh, the holidays in December, but didn't want to let it fall short and not get you guys the market report this month. So we'll just go ahead and jump right in. October's numbers overview, the average sales price was $241,000, which was just a 0.09% increase year over year. The median sales price fell a little bit, but it's still up 2.1% increase from year over year, up to 194000 Total sales were pretty much stagnant year over year. We just fell under 2,400 sales uh, during the month of October. Average rent price is just at a flat 1400 but it's still a 2.1% increase year over year. Employment in San Antonio, this is the biggest thing that we really kind of saw this month is we jumped uh, 14,000 jobs uh, this month to bring a 2.47% increase year over year to just over 1.13 million here in the San Antonio area. The unemployment drastically dropped by over a half a percent down to 3.23%, which is a new record low here in the San Antonio uh, statistical area. Uh, month's inventory pretty much stayed about the same, decreased a um, hundredth of a point down to 3.98. So all was still good in the month of October as the broad view of all of the numbers. So median sales price, you can kind of see here that we are following the trend that we normally see for October as the median sales price tends to fall once we get to these uh, colder months. And I'll, I expect that to continue. Uh, we'll probably get a little spike in uh, December, but uh, that's kind of the normal thing. You can kind of see that the last several years, that's what the majority of these spikes are, is everybody closes those house wanting to get to the new house before the Christmas season ends and the new year starts. So I will continue to see that to drop one more month, little spike, and then we'll drop off into January. And then uh, as long as the trends continue, we'll pick back up into next summer. Monthly rents, you can kind of see we fell, we continue to fall down a little bit, which is nothing too concerning. I mean, what concerns me the most is uh, how unnatural this year acted as to the previous years where it kind of gradually went up, plateaued, and gradually went down, where you can see uh, the middle of summer this year we kind of dropped off. But we're still following the trends where things tend to cool down in the into the winter months. 20-year unemployment, um, you can kind of see here that you can see how we spiked up to 7% in the dot-com bubble and it spiked up to over 7.5, almost 8 during the last real estate recession. We've been since about a um, couple of years, we've been continually trending down. And now you can see this year where we really dropped off to below the three and a half mark to set that new record low. One thing I added this year or this month that you noticed that you haven't seen before is I wanted to track year over year appreciation because I asked myself and people ask me what is my opinion on the real estate market? Is it picking up? Is it slowing down? Is it going to crash? What's it going to do? So I realized that I had the year over year appreciations back from uh, June of 2011, which was pretty much the bottom of the real estate market. And uh, the data kind of shows it here that um, the median sales price bottomed out right there in the June, July of uh, 2011. But the year over year appreciation bottomed out right there in December of 2011 at negative 6% from the year before. Um, but you can see right after that. In 2012, we jumped to 10%. 2013, we hit 10%. 2015, we hit 10%. Actually surpassed up to almost probably 11%. And one thing I kind of noticed that ever since uh, July 2015, we're still getting appreciation, but we're not getting as close to, we're not as hitting as many highs and get as many spikes as that we normally have. You can kind of see everything kind of trending down a little bit. For 2016, we didn't even break 6%. Uh, 2017, we did break over 8%, but it was just one time. So I think this data kind of shows that uh, we are kind of in a downward trend while we're waiting for real wages to pick back up to kind of continue the appreciation. But I think things are tend starting to slow down a little bit, not necessarily crashing by any means, but they are slowing down. Uh, so now the best part that everyone likes to see is where to market. I do this, if you guys have watched this before, I do this in two different ways. I do it by price range, but then I also do it by uh, zip code as well. 
So you can see our month of inventory is uh, once you jump over that 250 or 250,000 mark, it drastically jumps jumps uh, up to 5.4 months of inventory. And now months of inventory for those of you that might be watching this for the first time, months of inventory is how we judge the health, uh, the buyer and seller's market of. Um, real estate and which direction things are going anytime they say or they say the balance market is right about six months between buyer and seller that we're in a balanced market anytime we draw lot drop below six months we are in a strong seller's market and there's a lot of upward press and the lower the number gets the more force there is uh, to increase prices so you can see here we are in a strong seller's market even all the way down I mean I guess the 300 to 350 dropped down to four and a half but anything from 250,000 to 300 was at about 5.5 but underneath that uh, you can see that anything under 200 we're uh, less than or about two months of inventory so there's a lot of pressure for all properties to kind of really start appreciation to get up to that find that equilibrium in that balanced market um, but once you get over 200, it jumps over over one month of inventory, and when you go another 50,000, it jumps almost two months of inventory. So it's something to keep in mind when you guys are doing your renovations um, of where your months of inventory are to see how much competition you guys have on the open market. Now this is a broad price range for the entire city, and uh, we'll kind of break it down by zip code of where we have the lowest months of inventory. Keep in mind. The lower the number gets, the more upward pressure there's going to be for the prices to increase to get to that equilibrium level. Um, and now if you guys have been watching this for a while, one thing that I noticed, I've seen 78247 here, which is just east of 281 um, and touching 1604. About a year ago, this was sitting about the 160, 170, and a year later, we're almost at the 200 price point. So it's no surprise that the majority of these properties are uh, sub 200,000 except for 78249 which is sitting at 231,000. The rest are below that 200,000 mark so there's going to be a lot of pressure for uh, prices to continue to increase in these zip codes. So it's a great uh, chance to pick up property. Uh, it's where the highest demand is being shown in the city. So while you're renovating those properties, there's a good chance you might get a little extra appreciation if the rehab tends to go on a little bit longer. Now one reason I like to watch these is um, it really shows in the worst zip codes. Now by no means is this saying the best or these zip codes aren't any good. It's just saying that there is a lot, uh, it's a lot closer to a balanced market. You can see that every one of these zip codes is over that six months of inventory, which, which means it's starting to tip into the buyer's favor. So there's a lot of inventory in the city or in these zip codes of houses in these price ranges. And uh, you can kind of see that all of these, except for two, are over that 300,000 marks. That's why uh, we there's a little bit higher months of inventory in that. One thing that I've noticed here is 78210. This is just south and to the east of downtown, and this didn't even used to show up on my uh, market reports because I don't take any data for a zip code that had less than 30 active solds uh, on the MLS. And that's something that traditionally, it just never happened because there's a lot of old inventory, inventory that uh, needs a lot of disrepair. But what I'm seeing here is it is close to downtown and parts of it are right next to downtown. And a lot of houses are now appreciating to the level where people are selling them and they are allowing them to start moving uh, in that area because the appreciation is there where people can buy them, renovate them, and sell them and actually make a profit on them. It means people are actually moving to those areas as well. But there is still a very high month's inventory. So there's a lot of properties that is actively on the market and not that many are actually selling, but it is showing up on the market report, which is something to see. Now, why I look at this so hard is because if I'm renovating properties in these 300, 400, 500,000 price ranges, and you have some kind of loan on that property, you need to make sure like, if once I hit the market, what is my competition level and how long am I gonna have to hold this property? Because those 12% interest rates on a $300,000 loan get pretty expensive and come straight out of the bottom line. And if you've got to hold it for six months, it's something you want to make sure you're budgeting into your rehab budget.
So that's really it for this month's uh, market report. We hold, uh, if you guys want to get in touch with us more, you can shoot me an email, check us out on uh, Facebook, or visit our website at primehomes.com. We also hold a monthly meetup uh, 10 months out of the year. We take the summer months off because we hold it at uh, Craft Brews in Real Estate, and we move it to different um breweries around town and uh, like to sit out outside when it's nice have a beer and just talk some real estate if so if you're looking for that hit us up on meetup or check us out on facebook to get more information on that otherwise we will see you guys next month and one thing i'm going to do different next month is i'm going to give kind of a much more broad perspective of all of texas of the major metros of what they are doing as far as median prices and uh, month year over year appreciation so you guys can get a bigger scope of how the Texas real estate market is doing. So we'll see you guys next month.